To build a SDN lab with open daylight controller, we will need a reasonably powerful Linux server. And by reasonably powerful, I mean it should have at least a couple of gig of RAM, maybe four or more. That would be preferable. Perhaps a couple of CPUs. Now, if you have access to such a server, then you can skip this video and you can skip the next video also. But if you don't have access to such a server, then in this video, I will show you how to launch a Linux server with enough compute resources on AWS Cloud. The high level flow that I will follow is right here, AWS console page, sign in, launch the instance, and basically configure it. Choose the OS, I'll choose Ubuntu, and compute resources for the instance, and download the encryption key that will be used to log in the server. Now, it's a simple step, but it's, uh, it's an important step, so I just wanted to highlight that. So let's go to the browser and go through the steps. I'll go to aws.amazon.com slash console. If you have an Amazon account that you've used for online shopping, then you can use that to sign into AWS console. But if you don't have an Amazon account and you don't have an AWS account, of course, then you'll have to click sign up and register. I have an Amazon account, so I'm just gonna leave my information there and I'll just sign in. And this is the AWS management console. All the AWS services are listed right here. We are interested in EC2. That's the one I'm gonna click. And here we are. This is the EC2 service homepage. I'll click this big blue button, launch instance. So this is step one. We are going to select the OS. As you can see, there are lots of images and many of them are marked free tier eligible. I am interested in Ubuntu. So I just click select. And that takes us to step number two, where we are gonna choose the instance that we want to create. Basically, what kind of compute resources it will have, mainly the CPUs and the memory. So if you're new to AWS, then this T2 Micro is available for free during the first year. And it's a decent enough server. It has one CPU, one gig of RAM. I think for some small controllers like Ryu or Box, which are excellent tools for learning SDN and OpenFlow, this server would work fine. It's also good for just familiarizing yourself with AWS service. But we are going to be using Open Daylight. So I want to pick something larger. This M3 large, it has two CPUs and seven and a half gig of RAM. That should be a, a decent size machine for open daylight. So I'm just going to select that, review and launch. And from step two, we have jumped to step seven. Basically, it has done all the intermediate steps. It has picked defaults and all of them work fine for us. It is giving me two warnings. One of the warnings is security. I'll, I'll come to this in a minute, but look at this one. This one is just saying your instance configuration is not eligible for free usage because we have picked M3 large and only that uh, T2 micro is the one that is free. So I know that I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll just close this. You don't have to close it. You can still go ahead and click launch to go to the next step, but I'll close this. And this security warning that it's giving us, the default setting is that the incoming IP traffic could have any source address. And you can set a firewall rule where it would say the source address can be from a certain range. It still is going to be secure because only SSH tunnel port is open. On your client machine, you're going to have a private key, which is going to be used to encrypt uh, the traffic. But you could be sitting at your home office or your office or, or a coffee shop, but still be able to log in. And that's exactly how I want it. It's a lab for me. I want to be able to log in from wherever I am. So I'm going to not change this, just leave it alone. One thing I will change, it's for 
a little easier management. I will edit the tag, which is a friendly name. So let's call it my STN lab review and launch. So we are set. I mean, everything, the security warning is still there, but I am fine with that. That's how I want it. I, I've given it a friendly name and that's it. So the final step is to create that private key. I have an existing key, which I could use and associate to this server, but I won't. If you are new, uh, you won't even have that option. Uh, so we'll create a new key. Let's call it my STN key pair. And we have to download this key. It's important to know that this is a private key. This is your responsibility. Once this key is created, the private key we download and only you will have this key. Even AWS will not have a copy of this key. If you lose it, you cannot log into this server. Now you can go through the management console and the EC2 site, terminate or delete that image but you won't be able to log into the machine and work on it if you lose the key. Only you have this key, so it's your responsibility to keep this key secure and safe. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna click download and I'll save it to my desktop. So it's downloaded. I'll click launch instance. And there it is, it's, it's going ahead. It you, We saw quickly the steps it went through and the machine has been provisioned. We can view our instances. There it is, it's pending. It's basically still in the works, it's coming up. One thing important to know while it's doing this is that this server is not free. I think right now the cost of the M3 large is around 14 cents an hour at the time of recording. There's an excellent tool called AWS Simple Monthly Calculator on which you can find out how much each service costs and on the type of instance what its cost is going to be. And you can get a very good estimate of what your monthly costs are going to be. So on demand, that means whenever I want to, I turn it up and I can turn it, uh, I can stop the machine and stop the billing. Hours can add up. If you're not using the machine, you can just select it just like that and go into actions and you can click stop. That will stop the machine and it will stop billing for this machine. If you click terminate, it will stop it and delete the machine. You won't be able to restart it. If you only stop it, so it will stop the billing, but then you can come back to it and restart the machine whenever you want to. One other thing I should show you, which we are gonna pick up in the next video, is this public DNS or the public IP. We can use one of these two to log into this machine. So you, you still have to, you basically select the machine and this public DNS or public IP will show up and we'll use that in PuTTY to access the server and actually work on the server. So we have the Linux prompt and everything. These, the public DNS or public IP are going to change when we stop the machine and restart it. So we'll pick that up in our, in the next video.